Well, it's safe to say that this has been an epic year of tomatoes, both here in the Poly Club, and I know that quite a few people in Britain, in the States, it's been an incredible year for them. But now that we're in October, this is the end of the tomato season here. And so I'm thinking right now about clearing all of these beds in here and making space for winter crops. And this is a job for next week. So you can imagine that all the tomatoes are going to be gone and all of the fruit is going to be picked, both the red ripe fruit and the green fruit. But before then, I have one other job to do, and that is finish saving tomato seeds. Earlier this year, I spent a small fortune on open pollinated heirloom tomato seeds. So what I need to do to save money in the future and also to share these incredible varieties with other people is to save seeds. Now, there are three methods for saving tomato seeds that I'm aware of, and I'm going to show you each of them today. But first, let's have a chat about the types of tomatoes you should be saving seeds from and two types to avoid. In this bed, side by side, are two cherry tomato varieties. And they're very different from one another and not just the color. So here, right in front of me, I've got honeycomb. And honeycomb started off its life as a small plant outside the supermarket where I was doing a shop and I couldn't resist buying it. You know how it is. Gardener's Delight is this variety over here. And this is a really common, really popular salad cherry tomato in Britain. And it is an open pollinated heirloom variety, which means that if I save the seeds from inside any of these tomatoes, next year, the plants that are grown from those seeds will produce the exact same tomatoes. Now, going back to honeycomb, honeycomb is an F1 hybrid. And it was a surprise to me because it didn't say that on the plant label, which is why I bought it. But I did some research afterwards and I found out that it is indeed an F1 hybrid. Now, first of all, F1 hybrids are not GMO. They're not genetically modified in the way that you're thinking. And in fact, you can't buy GMO seeds. They're only available commercially to big agribusiness. But what this is, is that it's a type of tomato that if you save the seeds from it, the plants you grow next year will almost certainly produce tomatoes that look nothing like this and will taste nothing like this. And that's because of the way that it's been bred. And so do your research and make sure that the varieties that you're saving seed from are open pollinated varieties and not F1 hybrids. I'm just getting a little bit closer so that you can see these tomato flowers. Now, at the end of each flower, you'll see a little cone, a capsule, and that is created by the anthers, the male part of the flower. And inside is the stigma, the female part. And there's fertilization happening here, but because this capsule completely protects the female part, it's only getting pollen from its own flower. So it's, it's inbred, which keeps the, the variety what we're expecting, keeps it something that is easy to save from seed. There are some varieties though, that the stamen pokes just out of the end of this capsule. And if that happens, that means that any bees that are foraging for pollen on other varieties, that visit that plant and touch the end of that flower, they could inadvertently drop some pollen off and it could be fertilized by a completely different variety. And so if you save seeds, then again, you grow them the next year and are completely confused because it is not the same tomato that you thought you saved seeds for. So if you do have a heritage variety, open pollinated tomato variety, and you want to save 
seeds from it and it has those little dangly bits hanging out at the end of the capsule, you're going to have to take extra measures to protect the flowers with a little bag or some other form of isolation just to keep bees off of it. The first method for saving tomato seeds is so simple. This is the one that I use when I'm saving tomato seeds. It's just so easy. And all I'm going to do is open it up and put the seeds onto a piece of paper towel. The simple thing about this is, is that you can either squeeze the tomato seeds out or you can just use a little spoon and encourage them to come out. And some tomatoes have a lot more seeds than others. These beefsteak ones tend to have fewer than salad types. So just try to get as many out as you can. Now with this, there's a lot of pulp here, but there are still quite a few seeds. And all I'm going to do is just spread these out as best as I can. With this method, the seeds can stick together. And so when you are trying to grow these on later, it's better to try to space them out a little bit more. It's been two full days now since I spread the tomato seeds on the paper towel. And if you look closely, they're all dried and stuck to the paper. And what's remaining of the pulp has completely dried as well. And all I did was I set the wet paper towel on another one just to absorb extra moisture and then I put it on a surface that wasn't going to be damaged by the moisture. I put it on a cutting board and just let it sit in the kitchen for a couple of days. And at this point, all I need to do is store it away for later. And so I can put it into the Ziploc bag with the other ones that I've already saved seed from, or I could put it into my tomato seed storage container and then just take out a little piece of paper, so I'll cut a piece of paper and put that directly into compost and start seeds next spring or many years in the future because tomato seeds are viable for quite a long time. So saving seeds this way is super easy, super efficient, and it's also pretty easy to share them as well because you can just cut squares off the paper to give to friends. The second method for saving tomato seeds is one that a lot of people have heard about but might not necessarily have tried out just yet. And it is the fermentation method. And the fermentation method will give you completely dry seeds that you can store in containers, in seed sachets. And this is the standard way, I would say, to save tomato seeds. And I assume that seed companies use a much more industrial scale version of this method for the tomato seeds that you buy in seed packets. Now, the benefits of this is that you will be able to have all those individual seeds that are completely cleaned of any tomato residue. And so you can store them easily. And also you can stop any chance of disease passing from one generation to the next because those diseases might actually be in the tomato flesh and in that gel around the seed. And to use this method, it's quite simple. You need to have a jar that you can cover lightly. And all you need to do is, again, cut the tomato open. Now this is a salad type, so it has a lot more seeds than some of the beefsteak ones and you just squish those seeds into a jar. Get lots of good seeds off of this one tomato. Now, with the seeds in this jar, what we need to do is just put enough water that's about the equal proportion or equal amount to the seeds in that pulp inside with them, just enough so that you can swirl them around. And then, Loosely cover them with a cloth, or you can just put a lid on. Don't seal it tight, no need. It needs to have a little bit of air in there because what happens next is that this starts fermenting 
and it's going to smell pretty bad. You'll see all kinds of gunk forming and growing in there, but what it's doing is it's breaking down all of the membranes around the seeds. And at the end of about three days, you'll want to swill the residue off of the surface. So you'll put cold water in the jar and then tip it out. And you keep doing that until you have clean water and then you can pour it through a sieve and collect the seeds, dry them out, and then you can store them. For those of you who have been saving tomato seeds for years, you might be curious, what is this third method? The, the first two that I've introduced are relatively known, but the third one is something that I've just found out about myself. And it was through this book, Seed Saving, Back Garden Seed Saving by Sue Strickland. And this is the go-to Bible for saving seeds in the home garden. It is filled with so much information. So I highly recommend it. I'll put a link to where you can buy it down in the video description. Now, the third method that Sue describes is one that I've not tried before. So this is going to be really interesting and it uses a washing soda solution, which I've made here in advance. And this solution works in a similar way to the fermentation method in that it cleans the seeds completely of that gel coating. The difference is that the seeds will be a little bit darker in color. It will work a lot quicker and this works at cooler temperatures. For the fermentation method, you really do need to have a warm room. So if you have a cool room or a cold house, might be now in October, you could use this method. And in this is one teaspoon of washing soda and 250 milliliters of water. And I just mix the washing soda together with a little bit of hot water from the kettle and then I topped it up with cold water so that it's now room temperature. We're gonna try this method with a black crim tomato. And I've had quite a few of these this year. Really nice flavored tomato. First time I've ever grown it. And the seed packet was a good three pounds, I think. And so saving seeds, especially if you're growing lots of different varieties, really makes sense. So it's going to be very much like the fermentation method. And I'm just going to squeeze the innards of this tomato into a jar. What you do next is you add the same volume of the washing soda solution as you have of the seeds and the tomato pulp. And so you just eyeball it. That's what I'm going to do. I would say that that's roughly the same amount. Now with this, you'll need to have a lid as well but you don't wait as long as the fermentation method. It's the washing soda that really starts breaking apart the tomato in there. What you do next is you cover it lightly, just like the fermentation method, and then you wait a day, so 24 hours, and then you look on the bottom, and you, what you're looking for are tomato seeds that are starting to appear without their coating. And when you do see those seeds kind of sitting at the bottom of the jar, then it's time to fill this with water, tip out any of the gunk that's floating on the top, and then rinse the seeds like you would with a fermentation method and dry them out and then store them. So this could be a quite simple way to save seeds and actually really quick as well. There are a few different methods for saving tomato seeds and you can choose whichever one that you want or use all of them. My favorite is just the simplest and the easiest method, saving the seeds on paper towels. It works. And then when it's time to sow tomato seeds, I can just cut off a piece here and plant it paper and all and the seedlings shoot up. No problem at all. The important thing with saving tomato seeds is that you choose varieties like the San Marzano that are open pollinated. Don't save seeds from F1 hybrids. Do your research. Make sure that your variety is open pollinated because otherwise the plants that you grow from those seeds 
might produce fruit that isn't what you were expecting. And the other thing is, is make sure that the flowers don't have that protruding stigma either because that could complicate matters as well. Now, saving seeds is really worth your time because it saves money, you can share the seeds with other people easily, and even though I'm taking all of these plants out next week, I have the promise of tomatoes next year and for many, many years to come. And so saving seeds really does make sense. But speaking of all these tomatoes behind me, I'll be of course picking ripe ones today. There are plenty. And next week there, there will be more ripe ones, but there'll be even more green tomatoes. I can take those inside to try to ripen them up, but what I will be doing instead is making some more of this green tomato chutney. Definitely recommend it. Lots of people have left reviews on my website in particular. So if you have a glut of green tomatoes too, definitely check out this recipe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now. <laughs>